Welcome to our weekly three-minute therapy podcast with me, Dr. Michael Edelstein, clinical psychologist, and Mick Berry, my co-host, expert in REBT, Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, which is also the type of therapy I teach with my clients. Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy is based on the premise that our emotions don't come from situations themselves, but come from our thinking about situations. And there are three main demands that lead to our emotional disturbance. I must do well and get approval or else I'm no good. You must treat me well and kindly or else you're no good. And my life must be fair, easy and hassle-free and exciting or else it's no good. And when you have those musts, that leads to anxiety, depression, addictions, procrastination, guilt, and many more other emotional problems. Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy was devised by Albert Ellis in the 1950s, and he's written over 80 books on the subject. That's E-L-L-I-S, Albert Ellis. And I was a client and student and colleague of Albert Ellis's uh, many years ago. So today we're going to address the fiction that when people say, I can stand it about some unpleasant situation, they really are saying something that doesn't make sense much sense, such as, I can't stand the discomfort of feeling anxious, or I'm hungry, I can't stand it, I have to eat, or you criticize me, I can't stand it when you criticize criticize me. So when you think that way, it doesn't do anything to help the situation, it just eats you up inside and leads to emotional problems. Mick, did you want to add to any the introduction or anything about uh, yeah. I can't stand it? <clears throat> yeah, when you mention all the things that can happen, such as addiction or procrastination or whatever, it's just general dysfunction and contributing to not getting what we want and decreasing the chances of getting what we want. And so the idea, well, I don't know if this is about the intro, but I do have something to say about the concept of I can't yeah. stand. Should I say it now? Yes, please. Yeah, because you cleared it up for me one time. It, it, for the longest time, I felt that I would combat the idea of I can't stand it with fortitude and perseverance, and I'm going to stand this. I can stand it. I'm going to work, work, work to stand it. You pointed out actually you're standing it no matter what you do it doesn't matter what you do you are standing the situation and by being semantically precise i realized that what i was telling myself was in thinking i can't stand it that i was really not capable of anything but crawling up in a ball and falling apart on my bed when uh that actually wouldn't even occur probably and so changing the idea of I can't or combating I can't stand it to something I had to do to stand it, then you pointed out and I realized I don't have to do anything to stand this. I want to stand it well by being able to remain calm and anxiety free. But even if I am crawling up into a ball and falling apart on my bed, I'm still standing it. I'm just not standing it in a way that is that that feels good or feels okay so or is functional or is functional right so by remembering i'm standing this no matter what happens i am going to be standing this i don't have to do anything to stand it what i can do is remember that i am going to stand it and if i remember i'm going to stand it and rip apart the idiotic thought I can't stand it because it's completely idiotic. It's, I might as well try to believe that I can fly around the room. I'm going to be standing it no matter what. So there is no situation that I won't be able to stand. Of course, there are situations I want to avoid 
And there are situations that would be quite difficult and painful, such as being tortured to death, but that probably isn't going to happen to me, and that's not anything I need to concern myself over. Yeah, and also, uh, sometimes if you think you can't stand a particular situation, like I can't stand rejection, so I'll avoid uh, speaking to strangers, it's good to face the situation, to show yourself that you can stand it, you did stand it. As you said, Mick, you may not have stood it or put up with it as well as you have liked. You may have felt yourself uncomfortable, depressed, anxious, but you survived. So that's a reason sometimes, not all the time, depending on the situation, to uh, face difficult situations. That, in the past, you've convinced yourself you can't stand. Yes, Mick? Yeah, well, thanks for showing or for mentioning sometimes. There's some situations I think I would find difficult and I would remind myself I can't stand this, can stand this, such as skydiving, but I have no desire to skydive. So if I went up into a plane and tried skydiving, I'm sure I would be very nervous and there would be thoughts of, oh my God, can I do this? I don't know, and all these doubts. But that's a situation that I have it doesn't benefit anything that I want in my life whatsoever. And so I just don't even worry about that situation. Not every situation is worth testing ourselves to see how rational we're going to be in it. Yes. And uh, there are synonyms with, for I can't stand it, but it's the same wrong concept, such as I can't bear it, I can't face it. So they all have the same problems with them. Yeah, Mick? Yeah, it's more than I can handle. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. it's then a question of, is a situation worth me dealing with it in order to get what I want, such as if I want to meet a love interest, it's in my best interest to avoid the thought, I can't stand the rejection that is almost inevitably going to come by seeking someone out. So that would be a very good situation to rip up the thought of, I can't stand it. Also, um, often when you think I can't stand it, that comes starts with a must, one of those demands that I mentioned earlier. I must not be rejected, and I can't stand it when I'm rejected. Or I must do well, and I can't stand it when I fail. So uh, look for the must behind the I can't stand it. It's not always evident, but often it is. And as Mick would say, rip up the must. Also, show yourself the fiction of the must. Mick? Yeah, and I was going to say with that thought that I must not fail, I must succeed, the implication is... I would say usually, tell me what you think, but usually the implication is, oh, I must not fail. If I do, then I am utterly no good. But the truth is I can accept myself in any situation. So even if I fail, I can still accept myself. I have that capability. It might not be easy for me, but with practice, 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 I can get better at it. Yeah, yeah, there are a number of irrationalities that are part of the same constellation. As you're pointing out, I must not fail is one. I can't stand it is one. It's awful, terrible, and horrible is one if I fail. And I'm no good if I fail. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so the self-rating or other rating or life rating is, would you say it's almost always connected to a should? Yes. I would okay. say it always is. The thing is, some people are more aware of one of these aspects that of thinking rather than the other. So I've had clients who didn't really identify with thinking in terms of must or I can't stand it, but they did identify with thinking I'm no good. So mm -hmm. if that's uh, the case for you, then go after the I'm no good and show yourself that's fiction. You're always an imperfect human who acts imperfectly, whether you do well or poorly or people like 
you were just like you. Nick? Yeah, and so going after the three things we can accept, life, other people, and ourselves, is in, uh, invariably beneficial. I can accept myself no matter how well or poorly I do. So I don't have to worry about my self-acceptance being based on my success or failure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, nothing else comes to mind for me to uh, add to the subject. How about you, Mick? Uh, well, I would just say that the thought I can't stand a situation is, well, tell me what you think. Is it almost always uh, occurring when we are having anxiety? I can't stand this situation. Is that thought there whenever we're having anxiety? Uh, well, whenever is hard to say. I would just say often, and some people are more aware of that part of their thinking. I can't stand it. Yeah than the thinking that causes their anxiety first, uh, primarily, such as, I must not feel anxious, or I must not be rejected, those things. Maybe. Yeah, and I would also say, be very uh, aware of the possible secondary disturbance. I cannot stand having anxiety. That's when things really escalate to where it feels out of control. So watch out for thinking, I cannot stand having anxiety. And I can remember one instance in which you gave me a homework assignment to just let myself feel anxiety for 24 hours, to know that I could live with it and there was nothing to be afraid of. It was a very good exercise. After the end of 24 hours, I thought, well, okay, I've proven to myself that I can feel anxiety and it won't kill me. And so, all right, now I want to get rid of the primary anxiety, but it definitely got rid of the secondary anxiety. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, now, with the secondary disturbance that you mentioned, which could be in there where you're upset about being upset, you could have an I, I can't stand it about an I can't stand it. Yeah. So I can't stand rejection. That makes you anxious. And then I can't stand feeling anxious. So that's why we call it a secondary disturbance. Yeah. Um, and it's all too common <clears throat> and all too elusive. And uh, I think it's all too elusive among people in the therapy field. A lot of people are not aware of a secondary disturbance. And I think I've mentioned this in a podcast. And David Burns' very good book, Feeling Good, The New Mood Therapy, he doesn't mention secondary disturbance one time in there. Yeah, that's something that, in my experience with working with therapists, something that therapists don't notice secondary disturbance. Yeah. So maybe it's too abstract for their brain. I think it's just out of their awareness, really. I don't yeah, think it's right. I think everybody has the capacity to think that abstractly. Now, having another third disturbance about I can't stand believing that I can't stand it uh, would be a third disturbance. And I could wrap my mind around that. But then having a fourth one is a little beyond my comprehension. Uh -huh. Yeah. But nevertheless, the secondary disturbance usually when I, I, I find for myself and most people that I talk to, when you get rid of the secondary disturbance, then you're able to address the primary disturbance and live largely anxiety free. Yes. And when you are, uh, so when you uh, have that view that I can't stand some discomfort, um, one of the things you can do is do a three minute exercise, which I outline in my book a three-minute uh, therapy, and uh, that is what some cognitive therapists called the emotional ABCs, where you write down uh, the situation you're telling yourself, I can't stand it about. That's A. B is your irrational belief, I can't stand it. C is your uh, anxiety, and uh, then D is, what's the evidence I can't? it 
and E is there's no evidence, I can't stand what I'm standing, I'll survive, I've survived this in the past, I'll survive it in the future, etc. And then once you write that out many, many, many times, practice, 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 it eventually will get into your brain and you'll develop a new perspective without the I can't stand it, but just I don't like it, but obviously I can stand it. Mick? Yeah, and I was just going to say <clears throat> that Albert Ellis did, I once heard him say, life is spelled H-A-S-S-L-E. But I think we could also throw in life is spelled A-C-C-E-P-T-A-B-L-E. -E. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we have hassles uh, all through the day because we have goals that aren't met, small goals or sometimes large goals. And then the solution is acceptance. Just accept this is part of life, as you said, one hassle after another. So just accept the fact that's life, just like you accept the fact you're a perfect human and work right. toward that. And, and life is always acceptable. Even if we don't accept it, it's still acceptable. And it's in our best interest to accept it. And I find it inspiring to tell myself, okay, it's in my best interest to accept this situation and I'm going to do it because I can do what is in my best interest. I accept it. That's that. Life is acceptable means, doesn't mean you necessarily like it, but right. it means you don't have to disturb yourself about it. And, and it also doesn't mean that you just don't try to change it and improve upon it, but you accept that the situation does exist and that you can then attempt to try to change it. Right. The situation does exist. You acknowledge it does exist. Then you acknowledge you don't like it. And then you acknowledge you can change your thinking about it and change the situation in many cases. Yeah. Yeah. I would wager, Michael, that <clears throat> thousands upon thousands of years ago, some caveman or cave woman didn't like the situation of how cold things were. And uh, some there was probably a caveman or cave woman who said, oh, my God, I can't stand this. And there was another caveman or cave woman who said, well, let me see what I can do to make things better. I'm going to take these two rocks, rub them together, create a spark and get a fire. And hey, look at that. I'm no longer cold because I have built a fire and it's in my best interest to accept that, yeah, this situation is lousy. I don't like it. What can I do to see if it, I can make it better? Right. So I, I can stand it isn't necessarily the last step. There could be ways to change it. Yeah, but it is a good step on the way to solving problems. Well, I don't like it, right, is a good step on the way to solving problems. I don't like it. Now, what could I do about it if something can be done? Yeah, well, and I can stand it allows us to assess that we don't like a situation, wouldn't you say? Well, I think first you assess you don't like the situation. Then you irrationally tell yourself, I can't stand it. And then you could go on to just disturb yourself and give up or go on to see if there's something you can do to change your thinking about it and change the situation. Well, and you can also even be very rational and say, I don't like this situation, and never even lead yourself into the thought of, I can't stand it. Right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay, very good. Sounds like uh, we pretty much covered that subject. So I'd like to... Uh, First of all, thank Chris Rossini, our tech engineer. Thank you, Mick, for joining me on these great podcasts. Uh, comment below if you have thoughts about what we discussed, our questions, or you'd like to be a guest on our podcast. Give us a thumbs up if you like some things about it. Suggest subjects that you'd like us to address in the future and subscribe to the 3-Minute Therapy podcast to do what, Mac? 
to stay on the rational side of life and the rational side of your own awareness.